Sports. We are Blackboard. We are St. Louis. This is St. Louis Cardinals baseball, and tonight from Bush Stadium in downtown St. Louis, the Cardinals play host to the Los Angeles Dodgers. The men and women of our armed forces training at Fort Leonard Wood, and this one's for you. With Tim McCarver, I'm Dan McLaughlin. Delighted to have you with us. A very special night here on Fox Sports Midwest. And a chance for those at Fort Leonard Wood or wherever you're watching tonight to see two of the best left-handed hitters in the National League, Adrian Gonzalez and Matt Carpenter. And two teams, the Dodgers and the Cardinals, with October lore galore. At the corners for the Dodgers... Adrian Gonzalez, one of the best hitters in the game, and this year's first three games with five home runs. That's never been done before. Matt Carpenter, on the other hand, has buoyed third base for the Cardinals his third year in a row, and he has done nothing but hit, hit, hit. As far as the younger players are concerned, for the Dodgers, perhaps the rookie of the year this year, he's got a shot. Jock Peterson, their center fielder with power and speed, Speaking of power and speed, Colton Wong has provided that for the Cardinals so far this year. The Cardinals and the Dodgers should be fun. Right-hander who's been outstanding. Bull Singer going for the Dodgers. Right-hander John Lackey for St. Louis.
once again tonight. 1985, the Cardinals and Dodgers. Ozzie Smith with a home run, and we all went crazy. Just a season ago off of Clayton Kershaw. Another memorable moment against the L.A. Dodgers. The rivalry continues tonight. It's game number one. The Dodgers, the Cardinals, and this one's for you on Fox Sports Midwest. Baseball is brought to you by Budweiser, designated driver, and enjoy the great times. Save big money at Menards on all your home improvement needs. And visit your local Mid-America Chevy dealers for great prices on our all-new 2015 vehicles today. Should be a very fun night. This one's for you. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Oh, they've heard that a time or two, oh, I bet. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Let's take a look at the Dodgers lineup. This is a team that is leading the National League West, and Jock Peterson is leading things off. Followed by Jimmy Rollins, the switch inning shortstop. Howie Kendrick, Adrian Gonzalez, off to a great start, leads their club in RBIs with 35. Then Justin Turner, Andre Ethier, Alex Guerrero, A.J. Ellis, and Mike Bolsinger, is the pitcher and he'll bat ninth for Don Mattingly's club. For the Cardinals making his 10th start and he's been very good especially at home and that's John Lackey. Very good at home and very good on the first pitch. As many first pitch strikes as anybody in the game. And it is a good uh, consistent thing to do if you're a pitcher and if you're a hitter against a guy like that you're more apt to swing early in the count. We'll see what the Dodgers do. Exciting young talent right here. Jock Peterson hitting 263. 12 home runs already. And he's driven in 23. First pitch, a strike. Last three games have been multi hit games for the young center fielder. The Dodgers come in banged up a bit. No Yasiel Puig. Don Mattingly, the skipper of the Dodgers, a team that has played poorly away from Dodger Stadium. Only seven road wins this year. Seven out of 18. Like the Cardinals, a dominant team at home. 
Cardinals home record after the sweep of Arizona now at 18 and 5 Mattingly in his fifth season at the helm of the Dodgers. And you saw that shot of Don Mattingly behind him. Familiar face Mark McGuire back in St. Louis. There's Big Mac. Tim, he gave the numbers. The road record, seven and eleven for the Dodgers, and yet they're in first place because of just how well they played at home. They're ten games above 500, and they lead the West by a half game over you know who, San Francisco. Here they come again, after a three and nine start. Cardinals will miss Clayton Kershaw, Zach Greinke in this series. And he did go. They appealed down at third. Mike Bolchinski punched him out and a strikeout for John Lackey to start tonight. 61% of fastballs. That cutter, of course, is a fastball. So you're looking at a little over 80% fastballs that Lackey throws that's why his breaking ball looks so strange and that's the the pitch that got Peterson who will strike out a lot. Here's Jimmy Rollins and a ground ball to first taken there by Mark Reynolds and a flip to Lackey for out number two. Dobbs tired auto centers defense for the Cardinals tonight. Randall Gritchick is in left Peter Borges in center Jason Hayward in right Carpenter Peralta Wong and Reynolds on the infield. Molina is behind the plate. Matt Holiday dealing with the flu, so not in the starting lineup tonight. Yeah, Matt Holiday not in there, but Mark Reynolds get used to being in there with Matt Adams out. Adams had surgery today, successful by all accounts. Pulled tear in the thigh, so looks like his season very well could be through. Hamstrings are, are tossed around in baseball so much because they're the dominant injuries, but. Quads can be much worse than hamster pulls. I don't I'm not a doctor, but I don't know why that is, but I do know that I never had a hamstring pull, but I had both quads pull. Ooh. And I did that foolishly racing Jim Rice in early 1975. He not only beat me by about a stride and a half. 80 yard dash at Shea Stadium. That's a that's a fact. And I tore my right quad and couldn't tell anybody because if I told someone I had a torn quad, I would have been released. Sure. So I postponed my release for six weeks <laughs> and not telling anybody. And that's a fact, brother. Two balls, two strikes. Yeah, you've got a torn quad, you're a catcher. Yeah. You're in trouble. A little tough. One of the reasons you don't have hamstring pulls as a catcher is your hamstrings are actually stretched out when you squat. One of the good things about squatting and might said, be the only thing. But you said you weren't a doctor. <laughs> well, now you just gave me the great explanation of squatting behind home plate. Well, it stretches the hamstrings. You rarely see catchers with hamstring pulls. And you told me you weren't a doctor. No, I'm. No, I'm not. You're not a doctor. No, I'm but not. But you just explained it. Well, I mean, there are certain things you learn behind the plate. Uh, <laughs> you can apply to broadcasting. <laughs> Three and two, the count on Kendrick. Howie Kendrick goes from the Angels now to the Dodgers. And there's a base hit into right field. So a two out hit and extends the inning to Adrian Gonzalez. Missouri Lottery Fox tracks and he went with the pitch. Always been impressive how Howie Kendrick can expand the strike zone with two strikes. That pitch a little off the plate. So two outs and in steps Gonzalez, one of the game's best hitters. Average at 341, 10 home runs. He's knocked in 35. And he lines out to Carpenter. 
The Dodgers strand a runner. Cardinals coming up in the home half of the first. And there's no score. Randall in the cleanup spot tonight. Then Mark Reynolds, Jody Molina, Jason Hayward, Peter Borges, and John Lackey. Mike Bolsinger has been quite the find here for the LA Dodgers. Came over from Arizona in a trade this past winter. A .71 ERA. How does he do it? He does it with the breaking ball. You can look for the breaking ball if you're the Cardinal hitters tonight I was talking to AJ Ellis before the game he said he uses this curveball like other pitches pitchers use fastballs that means he's got command of it right 1 0 pitch and there's a base hit for Colt Wong Ethier up with it Wong to second and in there safely with a leadoff double you gotta love it make him throw you out Ethier with a poor throwing arm down the right field line, even though he's a left fielder, it's an easier throw for a, or a even though he's a left hander, it's an easier throw for a left hander than it is for a right hander. But Colton Wong making him throw him out and he doesn't. Very good base running by Wong. Also helped out by that momentary bobble. And here is Matt Carpenter. Wong led off the game against Arizona with a leadoff homer. And here tonight with the double, John Jay is back. Miguel Sokolovich has been sent down. And you wonder how Mike Matheny will address the leadoff position, but Colton Wong is making his case to stay in that spot. Oh, I think you keep him there, Dan. I don't even think you look back. Carpenter leads a club in home runs and RBIs. Eight homers, 27 RBIs, batting above 300. You know, you hear that often about a hitter with a man on second base and nobody out, get him to third. Matt Carpenter's too good a hitter to give himself up in this situation. He can drive him in. So John Jay back with the club. He's on the bench. With Holiday, Easley, Cosmet, Cruz. First time in a while the Cardinals have had a five man bench. Two balls, no strikes on Matt Carpenter. What'd you say, partner? He's too good. 
not to drive him in. And he nearly did. Base hit for Carpenter. Runners at the corners and nobody out for Peralta. If, if there's a better magician in the game with the bat, I don't know who it is. But Matt Carpenter eschewing the fact that he just get the runner to third base, lines one to left field. No thought of that. And that's he's just too good a hitter. Tim McCarver was talking about the breaking ball. Look uh, at that. Yeah. Look at that. Nearly 50%. You won't, you won't see that with any other major no. league pitcher. No nope. starter or reliever. It means he throws a breaking ball about half the time. He hadn't thrown one yet. Johnny Peralta, the walk off homer, Monday. Is seventh of the year. The Cardinals have four in this lineup that are hitting above 300, including Peralta. He's now at 305. And then you have Holiday on the bench. He's above 300 as well. Jock Peterson, that's about as deep as you're going to see in the first inning of any center fielder. Well, that's a fact. We have not seen. Uh... Sent not only is a center fielder Peterson, but if you're in right. Two balls, one strike on Peralta. Bullsinger, his fifth start of the year. 3 0. The ERA we talked about. His last start, eight scoreless innings against San Diego. And right now, he's riding 18 and two thirds scoreless innings. Consecutively. Both singer looks like he's having a problem with the mound. Perhaps the stride. Last pitch looked like he slipped. Yeah. Sure did. Yep. He's from Gurney, Illinois. Just north of Chicago. Grew up a Cubs fan. He was saying before the game that he understands the Dodgers and the Giants rivalry. How fans get into it. The Dodger fans always want to beat the Giants, vice versa. He said, but this is my personal rivalry. I've always wanted to beat the Cardinals. Well, he's got a chance tonight. Three and two the count. Carpenter, the runner at first base. He is running. And that pitch is hit down the left field line. It is. A foul ball. Wow, well, high breaking ball on a 3 2 pitch. Peralta just a bit out in front. I think, Tim, we can clearly tell early on this right hander doesn't have the feel for the breaking ball at all. No. Did not throw it to either Wong or Carpenter, fell behind Matt. Matt single on a 2 0 pitch. Has thrown three to Peralta so far. Carpenter running the pitch taken for a ball. Bases loaded for Randall Gritchick. A look at the Dodgers defensively. Guerrero in left field. Jack Peterson in center. Andre Ethier in right. Justin Turner at third base. They just traded Uribe to the Braves, so he's going to get the bulk of the playing time there. Jimmy Rollins at short, former MVP. Howie Kendrick at second. Adrian Gonzalez has won a gold glove before. He's at first base. A.J. Ellis behind the plate. Dobbs tying Auto Center's defense. Heading started with a double by Wong. Carpenter the base hit to left. And a walk to Johnny Peralta. Clearly, Dan, opportunity is knocked for young Randall Gritchick. Base is loaded. Nobody out. Talked about it in the previous telecast how he lays the bat. It's not upright anymore, mm -hmm. even quicker to the baseball. He has got a quick bat. One ball, one strike. An opportunity has knocked in his career. He's getting a chance now to play every day. If you produce, you stay in the lineup. If you hit, you play. Bases loaded, the 1 1. Now 1 and 2. Like to have that pitch back. 
high breaking ball. Hanger, huh, guys? <laughs> One and two the count on Gritchett. Dodgers are going to find out what they have with Bull Singer. Ryu is out for the year. Brandon McCarthy is out for the year. Zach Greinke can opt out of his deal after the season. So they need to find out if he can be part of this rotation from here on out. Grichik, a bouncer towards second base. Rollins, the turn, and a double play as a run does score to make it one to nothing. Johnny Peralta trying to get down. To take Rollins out of the double play, but the ball was hit too well. Long scoring. Sometimes uh, the ball hit so hard you don't have a chance to make it to second. You have to get down prematurely. And even though Gritchick is a fast runner, the double play, no RBI, nicely turned by the 36-year-old Rollins. Now it's Mark Reynolds. Cardinals when they signed Mark Reynolds the idea was to come off the bench provide power but also the Cardinals said you know he's going to get more starts than the prototypical bench player well now he's going to start day in and day out with Matt Adams potentially gone for the year yeah he's not a bench player any longer Matt Carpenter the runner at third no balls two strikes. Chopper to Jimmy Rollins. Still with a strong arm. Fires a strike to Gonzalez. So the Cardinals had the bases loaded, nobody out. They get one on the board. After one, one nothing.
All right, guys, thanks. One ball, one strike on Justin Turner. Ford Leonard Wood, located uh, in the Missouri Ozarks. The post was created in December of 1940. There's a base hit for Turner. Let's turn to Tim McCarver's Toyota keys to the game. Well, the Cardinals have to remember, and I'm sure they do, remember the last two Octobers when the Dodgers have come in here to play, and Dodgers do not have good memories of what happened in the postseason. Cardinals three and four against the Dodgers last year, but four and two in the postseason. Clay Kershaw has had back to back postseasons where the Cardinals have gotten to him. Surprisingly, I think for many. Last year's Cy Young Award winner. Andre Ethier skies one into shallow right center field. Peter Borges is there, one down. Dramatic Matt Adams home run. And as you said, Tim, Cardinals. You know, really, you catch a break. No Granky, no Kershaw they in get this weekend series. However, next weekend at Dodger Stadium, they get them both. Cardinals will face the Dodgers. These two teams will meet seven times in the next ten days. Yeah. Great, isn't it? Yeah, I love it. I do too. Two of the historic franchises in the game. Here's Alex Guerrero. Faced each other over 2,000 times. One game over 500. Right. I mean, that's just remarkable. It is. You think about the names of the franchises that have been a part of this for so many years. You know, Sandy Koufax, uh, Koufax and Don Drysdale, Bob Gibson. This goes on and on. And the names of the Dodgers. Originally named the Trolley Dodgers right. in Brooklyn, then the Superbas, the Perfectos, and one year they were named the Bridegrooms. The Brooklyn Bridegrooms. Now, who would come up with a name like that? It had to be an owner at the time that had a wife or a daughter. A marriage in the family. Yeah, maybe. something yeah, like that, I you guess know? So. Yeah. The Bridegrooms, huh? The it's, bridegrooms. it's not an intimidating name either. No. Would you play for? I play well. I play third base with the bridegrooms. <laughs> <laughs> that swung on and missed. One and two, the count. Guerrero is in left field. Carl Crawford is also injured. We mentioned Puig out of the lineup. It's pretty amazing when you look back to last year's postseason. Their position players, and then who's back here tonight? Completely different looking team, the LA Dodgers. Yasmani Grandel. They hope to have him back tomorrow. Seven day concussion. Right. Situation with Yasmani. But you have Howie Kendrick at second base. Steve Gordon was there last year. Justin Turner now at third base. They just traded Juan Uribe. And the Ramirez was at short. Now it's Jimmy Rollins. Crawford is injured, Puig is injured, and Kemp is now with San Diego. Here's a one two pitch. Second strikeout for John Lackey. Well, a full weekend of baseball on Fox Sports. Saturday, MLB on Fox Sports 1 returns. Diamondbacks take on the Brewers at 3. Then at 6, baseball night in America right here at Bush Stadium. Sunday, Cardinals are back here on Fox Sports Midwest, 12 30 to wrap up their series. With Los Angeles. Dan, you mentioned a name as A.J. Ellis is up there, a name that I try to be as empathetic as I can when I say this, but can you believe the how rapidly Carl Crawford has disappeared from the scene? I mean, this is a this was a major star four years ago. He goes to Boston, things started happening, injuries. Goes to L.A. in that deal with Adrian Gonzalez, and it's all but disappeared. And again, I, I want to stress, I'm saying that empathetically. This shows you how happen you can go, how fast you can go in this game. 
The stolen bases aren't there anymore. Over 400 stolen bases for Tampa Bay alone. Right. He was a outstanding player yeah. with the Rays that maybe you didn't hear a lot about because he was playing in Tampa Bay. Mm -hmm. But those around the game knew Carl Crawford was one of the best outfielders going at the time. Yeah, he went from anonymity to the Boston Red Sox. Right. Where every game is so important, the most important thing that's happened in Beantown. It's fouled back by Ellis. In the Hollywood scene in Los Angeles. The only thing I can think of in terms of guys that have fallen off quickly, it, 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 it's Boston, St. Louis, it's Alan Craig. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Boy, is that true? Gosh. I did not see that coming. Mm -mm. No one saw that coming. You figure with the injury, it might, you know, deter him from being the player that he was, but to fall off and not even be on the 40 man roster now with the Boston Red Sox is incredible. Touche. That's why John Lackey's here. At the time, I wasn't sure about the deal either. I wasn't. I'll tell you. I, I wasn't even sure whether I'd trade Pat Kelly for John Lackey straight up. Or Joe Kelly, I beg your pardon. Young fireballer. Mm -hmm. Live arm. It had some success here in St. Louis. The 2 2. Late call and a punch out of Ellis. Mike Winters, the crew chief, punches out A.J. Ellis. Third strikeout for John Lackey. We're midway through two. One nothing, St. Louis. Equipment. Find a servicing steel dealer at steeldealers.com or search STIHL. And by Ford, the official cars and trucks of the St. Louis Cardinals. Another field house at Fort Leonard Wood. That post created, as I mentioned earlier, in December of 1940, named in honor of General Leonard Wood, former chief of staff in January 1941. It looks like they're having a little fun. That's great. Can't stress how much they do for us. There's a 1 0 pitch to Yadier Molina. Danny Martinez, who does great research for us here in the booth. The nickname Bridegrooms came from several players getting married around the same time <laughs> in 1888. <laughs> so there you go. That's great. Let's go with Danny. 
Here's a 2 1 pitch. The breaking ball in the dirt. I don't know if you heard me say this the other day, but Tony La Russa was in town with the Arizona Diamondbacks. I know you watch a lot of our games, and sure. Tony uh, said, Yadier Molina is the greatest catcher that's ever played the game. Ever. Heard you say that the other night, and there's a base hit into right. That covers a lot of territory. The guy who was born on the hill here in St. Louis, down the street from Joe Garagiola. Uh -huh. A lot of New Yorkers who would probably say, no, no, no. Mr. Yogi, Yogi Berra. Berra. <laughs> Ted Williams said was the toughest out for the Boston Red Sox. Yogi Berra. Yogi Berra was the toughest out. That was guys like Mickey Mantle and Joe DiMaggio. Jason Hayward with a bouncer towards second. And they'll get the lead man. But that is uh, quite applauded from his former manager, Tony La Russa. Same. Obviously, Chris Carpenter was big. He told me Albert Pujols is Albert Pujols. He said, but I truly feel if we did not have Molina in 06 and 11, we do not win the World Series. And you being a former catcher, I think you can understand it. And it's times have changed to an extent on how much a manager and a pitching coach puts on the shoulders of a catcher. And Dave Duncan and Tony La Russa, they put so much into Mike Matheny when he was playing. Right. And Yadier Molina now. And it goes beyond looking at what a guy does average wise home runs. Well uh, the, the good pitching coaches I will say the, the good pitching coaches will communicate with their pitching staff through the catcher. Because it's a. It's an eternal quest to get on the on the same note with every pitcher for a pitching coach. And but he'll he'll. He'll go through the catcher for the catcher to help him because he's the guy who's making the he's calling the pitches. He's making the adjustments during a game. He's uh, trying to get a pitcher to throw for instance breaking balls behind in the count what have you. So pitching coaches and catchers are very very close. I guess that's. A, mm -hmm. The point of that particular discussion. One and two on Borges. In the game, the running game has changed. Now the catcher, you can see A.J. Ellis looking over at Don Mattingly. Don Mattingly will give a sign to A.J. Ellis. A.J. Ellis gives it to the pitcher, either pitch out or throw to first, what have you. And I guess you could make a, a point that the pressures of catching in the major leagues today Greater perhaps than in any other decade. When you were catching, the throwovers, the step offs, non existent. Non existent. Non existent. I mean, you talk to pitchers about it, give me a chance to throw him out and stuff like that. Gibson used to have a, a great line. He said, I had my chance, now it's your turn. <laughs> <laughs> Little chopper towards third, and a foul ball. That was a good non call by third base umpire Mike McClinsky. The reason is the ball wasn't past third. So it's a home plate umpire's call. And the home plate umpire, Mike Winters, properly made it immediately, and that took the heat off the third base umpire. Nice pickup. Yep. Right in front of the uh, third base bag. We had one of our evenings with the Cardinals, and uh, one of the fans said to Bob, Bob, do you remember when Joe Blow got a hit off you and he was standing at first? And he said, Well, yeah, because I put him there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember. <laughs> he was great. One of a kind. Greatest living Cardinal now that Stan Musial has passed. One two pitch.
Two balls, two strikes. Mike Matheny talking before the game about not starting John Jay coming back, wanted to ease him back into this, and also to reward Peter Borges, who he thinks has played well. Three and two. Let's see if the Cardinals start the runner. That's Hayward at first. I think you do. Got a one run lead. You take more chances when you're ahead. The pitcher coming up. Try first and third situation. Better odds when you send the runner. They were not running, and the pitch is fouled back. Sometimes you're a better hitter with the runner running because you don't try to do too much. You just make contact. A lot of guys who are having problems swinging through pitches, uh, a manager will put a hit and run on because all he tries to do is make contact. This is similar to a hit and run situation. There's a strikeout. And I'm thinking in Mike Matheny's mind, what just happened is part of that decision making process. You have a swing and miss guy, and Moore just does strike out. Well, on the other hand, there are always two sides to it. On the other hand, you make a better hitter out of him if you do send the runner because of what we were just talking about. AJ Ellis, by the way, eight stealing, uh, stolen base attempts against him. He has caught four base stealers. That cut by John Lackey. So two outs. Hayward the runner at first. One ball, one strike. Bolsinger not a hard thrower. They emphasize that. Talking again to A.J. Ellis. He said he never th hits 90. Never hits 90 on the gun. There's a fly ball out to left center. Guerrero backing up, plenty of room, and makes the catch right in front of the track. Cardinals strand a runner. They've left two on. We played two. One nothing, St. Louis. at bat number one after live baseball in-game highlights live look-ins replays and more and you can download that to your smartphone or tablet we have asked uh, fans across the world in particular military to tweet at us 
it's amazing the amount of people that we hear from when we do our this one's for you telecast. A.B. Pruitt. Use the hashtag this one's for you. Tim we've done it in years past where we've gone to Afghanistan and Iraq. Those are very emotional telecasts. No, I bet. I bet. Family members that come up that will be with me in the booth or Jim will interview them in the uh, in the seats and those family members have not connected with their loved one for months sometimes over a year and we'll be able to get them together and to do that to be able to put baseball aside and, and do that for our troops it's the least we can do we thank them for their service bull singer here ninth place hitter the pitcher then Jock Peterson and Jimmy Rollins. And the count runs full. Cardinals come in with a record of 31 and 16, minus Adam Wainwright. Now minus Matt Adams. Jordan Walt, big piece of the bullpen. And yet they find ways to win. Game the other night against Arizona, a typical win at all costs Cardinal win. Jason Hayward tied it in the ninth with a home run. Peter Borges scored the winning run. Strikeout number four for John Lackey, first time through this lineup. Did a lot of John Lackey games, I'm assuming, with Boston being in postseason play and the Angels when he was with LA. Game seven, Giants against the Angels in 2002. Game three, Detroit against Boston. Fast forward a decade later, which I think was his best postseason start. Game three against Detroit. Game one by the Red Sox that put him up two games to one, and they beat Detroit in six. This guy is a relentless competitor and a winner. I'm curious. Are you surprised one ball one strike with what he's been able to do here with St. Louis. I am. I'm surprised this year. Last year was. Uh, I thought. He's a strike thrower. And he'll help but too much of the middle of the plate. I'll tell you this year he has impressed a lot of folks. One ball two strikes. Peterson struck out on a check swing to start the ball game. One thing he's done this year that I don't think he's done in past years, he's challenged a lot of hitters. You're going to get burned occasionally doing that with middle of the plate fastballs. But over the long haul, they're a lot better off than the other way. Nibble here, nibble there. He doesn't nibble. Three and two. I think there is such a thing where you give a head uh, hitters too much credit. The best in the world. Absolutely. Do it three out of ten times. Absolutely. Full count delivery. And he did not go. And John Lackey is asking, "Where's the pitch?" Yeah, but uh, yeah, but John can't do that. Coming off the mound like that. Let the catcher handle that or the manager. You start arguing balls and strikes. He was run from a game last year. This pitch oh. was, a, was a strike. Yeah, you start doing that. He said that's right down the middle. Switch hitting Jimmy Rollins grounded out to first. You can get away with that with a young umpire. You can intimidate him. An older umpire. They have been known to stick it to guys. Oh yeah. <laughs> Mike Winters has been around a long time, oh, the crew yeah. chief. Jimmy Rollins has been around a long time. He's had a fabulous career, hasn't he? He really has. 
former MVP back in 2007. For his position, he's a borderline Hall of Famer. Mike Mike Schmidt, of course, Mike was a Philly, and Jimmy made his living with the Phillies for 16 years. He he thought that Jimmy should be a Hall of Famer. Remember, Hall of Fame shortstops do not have to have numbers uh, that are like outfielders, third basemen, first basemen, catchers, second basemen. Great Ozzy Smith goes in with his glove. Right. So did Phil Rizzuto and, and Pee Wee Reese. Yeah. If they had played in other cities, you'd think they'd have made it? Probably not. Here's a 1 1 pitch. Broken bat slowly hit. Wong will get Rollins and Peterson advancing into scoring position. You may recall it was September 10th of last year. John Lackey was ejected in the third. That was Tom Hallion for arguing balls and strikes. What I've seen with Lackey sometimes is that he'll do what we just saw. We'll, he'll scream and be frustrated. Yeah. And then as he walks off the mound after the third out, more towards home plate and try to have a conversation with the umpire or at least maybe explaining his case. Well, if the Dodgers score here, you might be able to see that from Lackey at the end of the inning. If they don't score, to me, it would be a shrewd move not to say anything and go right to the dugout. If they don't score, no harm, no foul. Mm -hmm. Howie Kendrick at the plate. One ball, one strike. Three seventy one in this spot. Runners in scoring position. One to two. Remember the first time Lackey went away from Howie Kendrick. It's a pitch off the plate on a 3 2 count. And he singled between the first baseman and the line to right field. And Hayward is near that line in right. They shift towards the opposite way. Gritchick and left way off the line. And the 2 2. Kendrick an all star back in 2011 with the Angels. Always oh, thought he was a good player. Good player. Three two pitch and a ground ball that's hit to short. Peralta makes the play. Sure enough, just as we thought.
Tim, I was going to have you read this promo because I know you'd really get into it. Prairie Farms brings a sweet season of winning contest. You can take a photo at the new Lulu the Cow display at any ice cream Sunday's event or while visiting Bush Stadium to win a Cardinals tickets or a party suite. I'm a, I'm a big Lululemon fan. I'll I know you, you that. are. I am. Great for yoga. And that's why I said you'd be into this. Yeah. Lulu the cow display. <laughs> Wong grounds back to the pitcher for the first out here in the home half of the third. It's 1 0 St. Louis. And this one's for you, Telecast. Thank you, Lauren, for tweeting in. Colton Wong, by the way, Monday doubled and scored to start the game. Tuesday walked and scored. Wednesday, the home run. On and the first tonight, pitch, right? Yeah, first pitch. And then uh, tonight, doubled and scored. A single to left, first time up for Matt Carpenter. The extreme fatigue a few weeks ago, and we haven't heard much about that anymore with Matt Carpenter. Cardinals have kept an eye on it. He thins out even more so during the season. Loses weight. The grind of the season, the heat of the summer. Guys get to the ballpark so early. And Carpenter is one of them. Looking at the charts, the video, BP, the workouts. Two balls, two strikes. You talk to some players, and it's just part of the routine what they've been doing since they were in the minor leagues. Others say they do need to get away from the game. Carpenter, a base hit? No. Kendrick makes the play. Well, knowing when to stop is as important as knowing when to start. Good point. There's Johnny Peralta. He walked back in the first. Cardinals had a great opportunity early in this game with the bases loaded, nobody out, and they picked up just one run. Bullsinger, a 27 year old. Peralta healthy cut at that breaking ball. A little smile. I think he got away with it. Oh. Got away with three breaking balls to Peralta. One almost a home run down the left field line, about five feet foul. Here's an 0 1 pitch. Much better pitch that time. Going back to what you pointed out, nearly 50% of the time throwing a breaking ball. You just don't see that. Unheard of. And I'm assuming, Tim, when you're throwing 88 to 89, and these guys are expecting a curveball, that 88 89 may seem like 95 96. Yes. And a base hit with a check swing down into the corner. Peralta thinking two. Standing up with a double with two outs here in the third. You know, a lot of people will say, well, that was just lucky. No, it wasn't. If you're not thinking away, we've talked about how Joe Torre used to preach all the time. Don't let a pitcher get you out away with two strikes. So what happens? You protect away. And when you protect away, you get hits like this. Pitch is off the plate. Little check swing, excuse me. Double for Peralta. That's a professional at bat right there. Ethier went hard into that sidewall down there. Initially, we couldn't see that from our vantage point, but saw it on the replay, and now it's Randall Gritchick with the runner at second base. Breaking ball taken low. Came up with the bases loaded and nobody out. Grounded into a double play, no RBI. Richick out to left, late break and over Guerrero. A run will score. Richick on his way to second base. 
changing places with Peralta, and it's two to nothing, St. Louis. That was not played very well by Mr. Guerrero. Well, that's true. I mean, here's a guy who played 51 games at second base last year for Albuquerque, the AAA affiliate. So he is not a good fielder, but Randall Gritchick hits some balls so hard that fools outfielders. This is a hanger inside part of the plate, and I mean, it is smoke. And Guerrero gets a bad jump. And Gritchick, after grounding into a double play with the bases loaded, first time up, drives in a run with a two out hit, does it the hard way. Second at bat. Here's Reynolds and a strike on the inside corner. So two outs runner at second base and a two run St. Louis lead. Man, the intrigue with Randall Gritchick when you watch him play. Intrigue's the proper word. We did the series against the Mets. That was kind of his coming out party for this year mm -hmm. with the, the defense, the five strikeouts, one game, and then the next night, two extra base hits. Night after that, three. And a high fly ball into right. Andre Ethier is there. Looked to be a harmless inning. Then two strikes on Johnny Peralta. As my partner says, a professional hitter. You got it. As he goes to right with the double, and then Gritchett placing a double over Alex Guerrero. It adds up to a two run St. Louis lead. Gritchick with his ninth RBI to make it two to nothing Cardinals as we move to the top of the fourth. Adrian Gonzalez leads it off. Then Justin Turner and Andre Ethier. Tim McCarver, Dan McLaughlin, Jim Hayes with you. Al and Pat at uh, Fort Leonard Wood. At Nutter Fieldhouse. This one's for you. That's it out of play. So you got a guy that let's just say at times could be short tempered in John Lackey mm -hmm. you as a catcher. What do you try to do with the home plate umpire. I mean do you talk to him and. Try to diffuse the situation. Or is that just mad you know I make him know. even is that I add mean, to it. It depends on what constitutes a short temper. I mean I think you go through the pitcher and not to the umpire. Mm -hmm. You know, 
Got to tell him whether he's been around or not. Boy, you rarely see Adrian Gonzalez taking a call third strike. The fifth strikeout, and this was September 10th of last year. And he does not want any more. And that's uh, Molina being the conduit there. Lackey step that was in Cincinnati, right? Yes. Yeah. These guys have long memories. Oh yeah. And they tell each other things. Oh yeah. Tight fraternity. They say, they say, you know, watch this lackey. He's got a quick temper. Well, that makes their tempers quicker. Or it's on their radar from the get-go. Yeah, exactly. He was one of the top pinch hitters last year, Justin Turner. This guy's a good hitter. You know, he's a member of the Mets. I mean, the Mets are having all sorts of problems with their infielders. I mean, the guy can catch the ball and he can hit the ball. There's not much left in the game. Can he throw? <laughs> he can throw. Enough. Okay. Well enough. You know, he's not a dazzling fielder, but good enough with his bat. Guy with five home runs this year. The Mets aren't sure when David Wright will return, if at all, this year. Yeah. Dealing with a serious back issue. Here's the 0-2. And by the way, Terry Collins is going to try a six-man rotation. A six-man rotation. Be able to see that uh, you'll be able to see that rotation the 17th, 18th, and 19th of July, right after the All Star game. Mets come to town for the only time this year. They're good. Those young pitchers are something. Here's a ground ball that's hit to third. Carpenter makes the play. Yeah, Matt Harvey is worth the price of admission. Oh, man. Jacob DeGrom, who might have been even better in the game that we saw that. Was the final game of that series, and Harvey started the first game and was terrific. Good strategy there, John Lackey making Turner reach. Good thing to do with two strikes. Andre Ethier with two outs. Carpenter way off the line, and even with the bag at third. Talk as to whether or not Don Mattingly would be back this year as the manager of the Dodgers. It's a sharp breaking ball from Lackey. One of the great players ever. You bet he was. From Evans, Evanston, Indiana, about 170 miles from here. Used to come here as a little leaguer. Evansville, Indiana. And a fly ball lifted to left. There's Gritchick. Near the line and makes the play. So one, two, three inning for John Lackey, Evansville, Indiana, the home to the Purple Aces.
Yadier Molina, Jason Hayward, and Peter Borges. A reminder that the postgame show will be from Fort Leonard Wood tonight. That's up and into Molina. Two balls, no strikes. He singled the right first time up. We were talking earlier about Jimmy Rollins and the potential of the Hall of Fame. It's a Whitey Herzog Garden Gnome Night, so it makes me think of what Whitey told me. He believes the Cardinals from this great generation that we've had of baseball. Nice play there by Rollins and a hot shot off the bat of Molina, but he believes you've got Tony La Russa at the time that would go into the Hall of Fame. Now is. But he said Albert Pujols, Yadier Molina, Matt Holliday head to the Hall of Fame. AT&T U-verse Rewind. Good to see Whitey, by the way, at the ballpark. Little check swing there for Johnny Peralta on Sunday. Similar type play tonight. That's the AT&T U-verse Rewind. Talking about shortstops, also, Whitey's great line in the middle 80s and signing Ozzie Smith to a big contract. Under the glove of Jimmy Rollins. And a base hit for Hayward, who's thinking second base, diving in head first and safe. Jason Hayward has had his problems on the bases, but this is not one of those times. He deserves a lot of credit running hard out of the box, and he didn't slow down at first. The only guy who slowed down on that play was Alex Guerrero, the left fielder. If he pounces on it immediately, in fairness to Alex, though, the ball was headed toward left center field, gloved by the shortstop, so he had to reverse direction a bit. That's just good base running by Hayward right there. And now Peter Borges. And strike one. Peter struck out back in the second inning. Only strikeout tonight for Bullsinger, but back to Whitey Herzog, his line. Whitey said when he signed Ozzie to that big contract, I think it was 1986, he said, what's the difference? He stops 100 runs from scoring a year. He may not drive in 100, but he stops them. What's the difference? Right. He does defensively what a lot of guys do offensively. I've never heard it put like that before. It's a great way to look at it, it though. It really is. Nothing in two of the count here on Borges. A base hit by Hayward winds up at second base. Whitey is one of the smartest baseball men you'll ever be around. Got a great baseball mind. Off the end of the bat, little squibber towards second base, taken there by Kendrick. And it brings in John Lackey. You know, people forget because of Whitey's great success as a manager in Kansas City and here in St. Louis, but his background in scouting and player development is second to none. With the New York Mets back in the late 60s, early 70s. Think about some of the players he was responsible for developing. A lot of them pitchers, granted, importance of pitching. Nolan Ryan, Tom Seaver, Gary Gentry, Jerry Kuzman. Mary Lou up in the booth with him as well. Those two have been together for years. The white rat, and there's Mary Lou on the far left. Two balls and no strikes. The thing about Whitey, she's approaching 90. And he's still sharp as a tack, man. I mean, he knows everything that's going on with this team and around baseball. Lackey with a fly ball into right, and there is Andre Ethier. Cardinal strand a runner. Two to nothing, St. Louis, as we head to inning number five.
Tim McCarver, Dan McLaughlin, Jim Hayes with you. And here's Guerrero. First pitch, ground ball to third. He throws strikes, does not give up many home runs. It's a great combination here for John Lackey. It really is. A two and three record belies uh, a very consistent starting pattern for Lackey all year. With Adams out, it'll be interesting to see what the team wants to do in terms of the trade market. Are they going hitters? Are you looking at a pitcher? I think at this point in time, the Cardinals still looking for pitching. I, I think so. I think you're right. I agree with that. The reason I say it is if you look at how they came into the season with a healthy Adam Wainwright, so you're hoping, let's say, 200, 210 innings from Wainwright. Mm. Now that's erased. And even when he was healthy, they were going to be very careful with the innings of Michael Walker and Carlos Martinez. And now you throw in Jaime Garcia into the mix. Garcia coming off injury. Martinez from the bullpen to the starting rotation. And Waka, of course, the top of the shoulder problem. So innings do become a little bit of a concern. I think Cole Hamels is going to end up with the Dodgers or the Cardinals in that order. I think the Dodgers are going to try to get him first. And if they don't, the Cardinals will. 2 1 pitch. Cole Hamels, by the way, is pitching very, very well now. Innings eater, too. Yeah. Wins games. Oh, he can pitch. Yes, he can. The 2 2. We saw him pitch at Bush, uh, Bush Stadium here earlier this season. And same old Cole Hamels. Yeah, I have nothing to base that on other than just from a fan standpoint. Yeah. And the needs of the Dodgers. There's a strikeout. Six tonight for John Lackey. Twice he has gotten Ellis. Looks like a cut fastball. Brings in Mike Bolsinger. And a fly ball lifted into shallow right. In comes Hayward, makes the catch. Eight pitch inning for John Lackey. We're midway through five. Two nothing Cardinals.
Fans, ages 21 and older, the fifth Stein in the championship series, which highlights the 30th anniversary of the Cardinals' 1985 National League Championship team. Tickets at cardinals.com slash promotions. Well, John Lackey has been awfully good so far here tonight. He has set down the last eight he has seen. He has struck out six. Only two hits allowed. Better starts we've seen from Lackey. Here's Colton Wong. Double to right and scored. First run of our ball game. And also grounded back to the pitcher. One for two. I was thinking the other day, you could have Colton Wong, Matt Holliday, Matt Carpenter. All is all stars. Johnny Peralta is the leading vote getter at short. Trevor Rosenthal will be in that conversation. It's long. It's a fly ball into center. There's Peterson. One away. So you have these injuries and you say, well, how are they doing it? Then you look at some of the players they have on this roster that are performing at high levels. And this is one of them right here. Cardinal, Cardinals, though, have an odd offense. I mean, they're second in hitting, 268 team batting average coming in. And th there aren't a lot of first men on base. You know, baseball is a game of first. Usually when the Cardinals score, it's with two outs or uh, with one out. They don't, they don't score a lot of cheap runs. Ground ball out with the infield back in the first or second inning, third inning, something like that. When, it, when the defense is conceding a run. That's because, and you know, tonight's a, a good example of the best way to score multiple runs, and that's start out with your first guy and then driving to third, that you play that first and third and that get that carousel going. That's a way to hammer a team. But the Cardinals' offense isn't like that. They'll have the occasional home run. The big, it seems like all the home runs are big. Yeah. You know. Key moments, mm -hmm. key times, mm -hmm. clutch hitting, on a one-run game. Yeah, extra inning games. They, they extra inning games. They played seven, I believe. That's taken just a bit low, and Carpenter draws the walk. What's on tap? You can see the game locally tomorrow on Channel Two. Frias and Walkup. Tomorrow at 6, our Budweiser What's on Tap. And we'll be back with you on Sunday afternoon. Come your way at 12.30 on Fox Sports Midwest. There's no way to quantify this, Dan. But when you don't score a lot of runs, your pitchers can be better because they have to be better to win. Yeah. They have to be better for you to win. First guy that brought that up to me was Howard Paulette, the pitching coach for the Cardinals back in the early 60s. He said, if you're not, he told the pitching staff, if you're not getting a lot of runs, you'll be a better pitcher. So accept it and look at it that way. Can you look at it too, conversely, that then a pitcher thinks he's got to be too fine? Well, you can, but for the moment, I mean, these guys are professionals. It's their job to figure it out. One and two on Peralta. And then, and then you talk. I mean, if, that, if that's the case, you talk. Talk with the catcher, you talk with the pitching coach, and then you bring it out. It's constant conversation, constant going over the same things. It's repetitious. Baseball's a game of repetition. That's why there's so many games, 162 games a year. I mean, how in the world can you not be repetitious in this game? We as broadcasters try to find different ways to say things, but it all gets back to the same thing. You know what I'm saying. I mean, I do. You know, it's it, you. You are repetitious. We're repetitious, and and players certainly around each other are repetitious. And that's how you learn too, through repetition. I say it's uh, we start getting these games in June, July, August. How you doing? It's Groundhog Day. It's the same thing. Get to the ballpark early. Start getting ready. Yeah. Play the game that night. 
That's that's one of the charming things about the game. It's the it's the day to dayness of, of life. The not grind. The, not the wax too pro oh, poetic I, I, here, but it's it's true. I think it's the grind. I think that's one of the beauties of this sport. Runner goes. Strike out of Peralta. And a stolen base for Matt Carpenter. Second strikeout for this right hander and it brings in Randall Gritchick. So Matt Carpenter inching off, inching off. He ran and watching the hitter, and when he saw Peralta take that third strike, he put a little extra juice into sliding in the second. Randall Gritchick with an RBI. And one for two tonight. As he doubled over the outstretched. Glove and arm of Alex Guerrero in left. First stolen base for Matt Carpenter this year is Gritchick skies one into right field. Andre Ethier is there and puts it away. We played five here at Bush Stadium on this Friday night. Two nothing Cardinals. Kia in the driver's seat. John Lackey, lowest ERA against the Dodgers, active starters, minimum 10 starts. 1.93. Angels and Dodgers always play each other in interleague play, so that's where he would rack up those starts. I mean, how do you figure things, Dan? I mean, he comes to St. Louis and loves the mound. Yeah, loves to pitch in this ballpark. It's a different pitcher here. Here's the one. Numbers bear that out, right? And I agree with you. I, I think he has been much better this year than what we saw at the tail end last year. Mm -hmm. It wasn't like he was pitching poorly. Mm -mm. But he is sharp this season, and especially here at Bush Stadium. One ball, two strikes on Jock Peterson. Top of the lineup here for the Dodgers. Peterson is struck out on a check swing and also walked. That was in the third, and that was when Lackey had words with the home plate umpire. Molina holds on, and it's a strikeout. Seven tonight for Lackey. Saturday, June 13th, walk home with the Cardinals' pet leash. Compliments of Nestle Purina. They're available to 25,000 pet lovers ages 16 and older.
Get your tickets at Cardinals.com slash promotions. Seen Jimmy Rollins go over to many, many games and then the third time up try to bunt for a base hit. Fastball and a strike. I've always enjoyed visiting with Jimmy oh, Rollins. He's great, great guy. Enjoy watching him play. I mean, Jimmy Rollins can do most anything. Of course, uh, the players are making so much money now. If they take care of their money, they're in pretty good shape when they retire. But Jimmy, Jimmy's the type guy that I would think would want to be involved either in the game or in our business. Very well spoken. He's bright. He's funny. Just a terrific guy on and off the field. There's a ton in the community, too. Oh, yeah. Just in this at bat right here has been inconsistent with that portion of the plate. Yeah, that ball was outside. Jimmy even argues mildly. <laughs> and he had an argument there if he, he wanted. He certainly it. did. Here's a 2 2. Into right, and Hayward keeps it in front. And a hard hit ball. And a base hit for Jimmy Rollins. See Molina reach for it. He had set up outside and mm. that caught a lot of the plate. That that's a very good point, Dan, because when a catcher moves the glove that far, a lot of times you can tell whether it's a good pitcher or not. But when a pitcher Mitch misses far enough that where a catcher has to move the glove that far, usually that ball is going to be hit hard. Might be at somebody, but it'll be hit hard. So one out, tying run at the plate. Howie Kendrick, who's one for two, he singled to right and grounded out to short. Back in his prime, Jimmy Rollins was a threat to hit a home run, steal a base. MVP. Back in 2007. Yeah. Cornerstone of great run that the Phillies had. Rollins, Utley, Howard, the pitching. And if you went over that fan base, you're a good player. And that fan base loved Jimmy Rollins. You know a thing or two about the Philly fans. Oh, yes. Played there seven years. I asked Jimmy once about uh, about how he handled the, the Philly fan base so well. He said, I, re I realized that I was an employee. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's so well put, you know. Not Absolutely. rising above anything, and, and he portray, he was portrayed that way with the Philly faithful. Here's a 1-1 and a strike. I was watching Rollins here. He took a lead, and he pointed at Lackey. He thought he balked. He's balked twice this year. Maybe he didn't stop. Nope, he stopped. He appeared to stop. I don't know. One ball, two strikes. Could be two. A flip to Wong. Double play. Six, four, three.
Don Mattingly's club, T-Mobile Game Changers. Well, Kershaw and Greinke, two of the best. Everybody else, so-so. You see the ERA in 26 starts. For the rest of the staff, 4.31. But with Clayton Kershaw and Zach Greinke back-to-back, -back, as good as anybody in the game. Mark Reynolds, first pitch, base hit to left. Hanging breaking ball, and he's one for three tonight. We have talked so many times about Stan Musial having 3,630 hits, 1,815 at home, 1,815 on the road. Well, Don Mattingly, during his career, set a major league record in 1987 with six grand slams and never hit another one after that year. He had six in one year, and that was it. He also had the streak, if memory serves correct, of the consecutive days with a home run, I too. I think it was nine. Eight or nine, yeah. I, yeah, I think it was nine. They were down in Texas. I believe it was 85 or 86. That's amazing, though. Six in one year, and then not. Before or since. Before wow. or after. We mentioned that he's uh, from Evansville, Indiana. He goes back there. There's a big fundraiser every year. He had a pass less tonight of 30 tickets. Oh, did he really? Yeah. <laughs> Huge Cardinal territory. You bet. One ball, one strike. You'll see him at the, uh, the university, Evansville University, watching college basketball a lot in the offseason. Evansville of the Missouri Valley Conference. Where Andy Bennis pitched. One ball, one strike on Yadier Molina. He's one for two tonight. I had to go to the book to double check that, but that's right. Uh, six grand slams in 1987, and and none after that. Incredible. Yeah, especially when you're playing for the Yankees. You're playing yeah. at Yankee Stadium with a short, short porch. porch. Yep. And the new Yankee Stadium, still a short porch. Oh, yeah. Talking about it being the house that Ruth built. It was the house that was built for left-handed hitters. Yes. The old one and the new one. Here's a 2-1 pitch. Runner goes, hit and run. Ground ball left side. And Turner makes the play. At Fort Leonard Wood, having some fun with Pat and Al. It's usually what uh, myself and Tim McCarver do before oh, yeah. our first pitch. Oh, yeah. That's how we get ready. Yep. I'm curious, how would you assess Jason Hayward? What you've seen so far this year? Sporadic. I don't know any other word that yeah. defines him. You know, occasionally he's been very, very good. Base running has not been good, generally. Even though he made a great base running play his last time up, going to second base on a ball that a lot of guys wouldn't go on. It's a big four months coming up for him as he hits free it agency. Is. Yeah, that's right. Here's the 01. One thing from an offensive standpoint, it's the ground ball the other the, to, that he's been pulling. It's good to see him get a ground ball at the shortstop playing up the middle. He smoked that last ball. I think what's been interesting too is that he's actually been hitting left handed pitching quite well this year, which has he been has. a sore spot for him. Mm -hmm. But this season, not the case. Man at second is Reynolds. One ball, two strikes. 
starting to cool off a little bit here in downtown St. Louis and we understand rain is on its way. I mean you think about Jason traded over here as a walk here there are a lot of things going through his mind. Mm -hmm. So it's understandable if he would be playing with the coin a, a term or a psychological phrase of playing with half confidence maybe. Getting comfortable here. Yeah. The team that erasing doubt. The only team that you knew. Yeah. Your hometown team. You signed you with them. You're yeah. from Georgia. It's 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 a shock when you're traded initially. You don't know your teammates. You've heard of them. You've read about the tradition here with the Cardinals. You want to be a part of it, a successful part of it, but you're not there quite. So you're feeling your way. Whereas perhaps with Atlanta he was. You know a lot more confident and a lot more aggressive even Mike Matheny's talking about being more aggressive defensively we want you more aggressive. You know the thing you can see is the ground balls to second base or the or the little rollovers or things like that are perhaps non aggressive in the outfield the thing you can't see. Is the mind working? Mm -hmm. Up and in to Hayward. Love the drink run with any size, any flavor McCafe shake for just $1.99 at McDonald's. Pretty appropriate with the Dodgers here, wouldn't you say? Yes, sir. Yeah. Dodgers searching for offense, searching for runs. Cardinals lead it 2 0. Talked about their struggles on the road. They get bad here for Borges. Tim, their scoreless streak is the longest it's been since 1937 on the road for the Dodgers. Yeah. Oh my gosh. 1937, Ducky Medwig was winning the Triple Crown for the Cardinals. Throw down to third, and Reynolds is out. I know, I know. I can tell by the, the tone of your voice, you're not pleased with that caught stealing, but it's not a bad play with one out. A.J. Ellis to throw right on the money. With one out is the time to do it. <laughs> you could tell just with my tone. Uh, huh? Yes, I could. If he was safe, I would have said, that's a great play. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I know the mindset. Mo most people say anytime a guy's tagged out at a base, it's a bad play. It's not necessarily true. Most of the time, the bad base running plays are plays that you can't see a guy not taking an extra base and I just think it's refreshing the Cardinals with the two nothing lead you got the pitcher on deck you talk about trying to man manufacture a run it's not a bad play especially with the pitcher on deck yeah right now of course is if he gets a base hit you say yeah well, I mean, what do you know about the game <laughs> I have to be honest. I never thought when I worked with Tim McCarver right here. Nee, nee, nee. <laughs> I love it. Two outs and a runner at first. And Borges strikes out, and the threat is through. So we head to the seventh. Two nothing. Nee, nee, nee. <laughs> St. Louis.
Here's uh, the Dodgers, the Cardinals, and the Nationals. And San Francisco is caught fire now just a half game out. Chicago, Pittsburgh, and then you see the Mets trailing Washington. I think if you ask most people that follow the game, they would say those would be the three teams that many predicted right. to win. Right. But time will tell. Injuries happen. Trades happen. Teams get on a bad roll. We've seen that before. They can't come back from it. Got to love in terms of the Central Division, the pitching of the Pirates. It's just P been pitching in their defensive defensive outfield. Yes, best outfield I've seen in a long time. Defensively, top of the seventh, and Lackey deals to Gonzalez, and he smokes it into left center. Taken there by Grichik. Nice play to get it back in and holds Gonzalez to a single. That ball was smoked. At one point, John Lackey had set down nine straight. He struck out seven in this game. And the Dodgers with only their fourth hit. Up the middle. Past Wong and into center. So runners at first and second. That'll get the bullpen going for St. Louis. Lackey at 86 pitches. So look at their offense this season. And it has cooled off considerably the offense and the temperature here at the ballpark. A uh, different approach against Lackey. One hit by Gonzalez to left center field on the first pitch. And then Justin Turner with a single up the middle. I'm not saying he would have made the play as Manus gets going on the uh, Cardinals bullpen, but I wonder if Lackey had a chance to make that play or knock it down or slow it up and let it go, thinking that the defense was bunched. Up the middle for I the think potential was, double play. Yeah, I think it was a reaction play, and ball was by Lackey before he had a chance to to react. Ethier looks at a ball low. Where would the Dodgers be without Andre Ethier? We were talking about trying to trade him. Who would want him? Crowded outfield with Crawford and Puig. 1-0 pitch. Key one ball, one strike. Pardon me, Dan. Key situation right here because Ethier just eats up right-handed pitching. Batting 304 against right-handers for his career. And here with nobody out and two on. One and two. Yeah, they've been talking about trading Ethier for years. They had Kemp, so then you had Crawford, Kemp, Puig, mm -hmm. Ethier. Mm -hmm. Someone's got to sit. Right. Kemp now in San Diego. One ball and two strikes. Two and two. He wants to talk it over here with Molina. The approach on this 2 2 pitch. But generally speaking, if you're trying to entice a ground ball from a hitter, you keep the ball away. You don't jam a hitter unless you need a, a strikeout. Strikeouts are inside 
ground balls are away. Going away and caught a lot of the plate. Ethier thought it was down, a strikeout, and the eighth tonight for Lackey. You could see if you're saying that ball was down. Now Lackey getting the low pitch. And now he's run. And Mattingly with no other choice but to protect his player. Don can't argue balls and strikes. Otherwise, he'll be gone. Now with replay, I miss this. I like seeing these. Good old fashioned argument, Tim. I mean, I never hurt anybody. Maybe you throw your hat, kick some dirt on the plate. So Mattingly is run. I am a card carrying pacifist. <laughs> Get out of here with that. Here's Guerrero. Trying to get that ground ball there. A little cutter. Guerrero 0 for 2. He is struck out and grounded out. Card carrying pacifist. <laughs> Popped up. Foul territory. Carpenter 2 down. Asked you to tweet us your photos, in particular the military. This one's for you. I like the shirt there, Smitty. Two outs, AJ Ellis. And strike one. Lackey is due up first for the Cardinals, looking at to the bottom of this inning. What could be his final inning of work right here? I think it's probably his last man right here. If Ellis gets on, I'm. You could see Mike Matheny make a move. John Lackey by inning tonight. The first two reach with a single to left. That was Gonzalez, then a single to center field. Strikeout of Ethier. Guerrero popped out. And now 0-2 the count on Ellis. Got him. Nine strikeouts for John Lackey.
Gateway Honda dealers will donate $1,000 to the Make-A-Wish Foundation. A major league debut. And easily. On a pennant contender. Ed from Memphis. I would imagine uh, a lot of folks traveled up to see this. A Chevy call to the pin. Left-hander J.P. Howell. They have three lefties in their pen. Libertor, Howell, and Rodriguez. So 29-year-old Ed Easley. Here's a two-ball, no-strike pitch. Two and one. You think about that. You sign when you're 18, 19, 20 yeah. years old, and your first major league at bat is 29. You think of all the toil, the bus rides, the early morning flights. And he's putting up numbers this year. Yeah. And there's a reason he's here. They, they feel he is swinging the hottest bat right now for Memphis. Right. Six hundred and seventy nine career minor league games. Wow. The two two pitch. And if you asked him right now was it worth it. He'd say you bet it was. If he gets a hit you bet it's worth it. Here's a three two pitch. Hit left side and off the glove of Turner and easily is aboard. Now who's not pulling for that to be a hit? Forget the homerism or anything like that. Just from a human standpoint, probably be an error, but Ed, it is. Ed's on first. Tough play in between hop for Justin Turner. So easily is aboard. Next best thing. Now Colton Wong. So easily was the pinch hitter for John Lackey. His night is through. Seven strong innings, scoreless innings for the Cardinals right hander. Tim, when you start looking at the numbers of the deal, John Lackey for Joe Kelly and Alan Craig. And also the dollars and cents of that deal. John oh, Lackey's yeah. pitching for the minimum this year. Uh, it's clearly, one clearly. of the great deals right now in the game. No question about it. Incredible. One ball, one strike on Colton Wong. He didn't like that call. Wong has doubled and scored, grounded back to the pitcher, and also flied out to center. Check on easily. JP Howell's been around for a long time now in his ninth major league season. 31 year old from Modesto, California. And Wong chops it towards short. And they turn two. Not in time. Every Tuesday during the regular season, fans can purchase a special theme ticket to Bud Bash and get an exclusive bobblehead and autographs of the 1985 National League Champion Cardinals. Don't miss Danny Cox, June 2nd. For a full schedule of players or to purchase tickets, visit cardinals.com slash Bud Bash. Carpenter has lined out, he's walked, and he's singled. Kevin Segrist getting loose in the pen for the Cardinals. Nicasio getting loose, a right hander for Los Angeles. JP Howell does not have a good move to first base. 
JP has pitched primarily in the American League with Kansas City. Had some good seasons with Tampa Bay. First pitch to Carpenter. Taken for a ball low. If things shake out the way that Mike Matheny hopes that they do, Segris has become primarily the eighth inning setup man to get to Rosenthal. Kevin's velocity has returned. Tough outing last time out against Arizona, but for the most part has been very good this year. In the dirt, two balls, no strikes. Really use one of two. Seth Manus, if you need a ground ball double play, he could be your eighth inning guy in the middle of an inning. Maybe start out with Seekers, but Kevin's done a much better job getting out right handers this year. It's not just fastball slider. A little change up. The 2 0 pitch to Matt Carpenter. Runner goes, that's Juan, and he is safe at second base. Jimmy Rollins. Well, you might as well keep going. I think when you said up. that Juan came off the bat here. Yeah, he said the hand came off, but the, but he tagged the foot, but the foot was already on there. Sleight of hand right here. See, the foot Ooh. was already on there. I thought the toes were on there. I don't think that's convincing enough either. Well, the, the view is blocked with the, the toe if it did come off. It's which not, it may not have. Not blocked from the guys in New York, though. And these Maybe. guys. The best view of it was Jimmy Rollins and yeah, he's saying, hey, his yeah, foot's off. Right. And the way that Wong was standing at second base, kind of head down, almost like, uh oh, I got caught. The one thing Jimmy did well was he kept the tag on the back. He didn't come up and then go back. I thought the toes were there. Uh, Slight of hand. Great Kreskin. <laughs> he, by the way, is a magician for those right. who may not have heard of Kreskin. Harry Houdini, may perhaps. He was a teenager when Houdini was operating back in the 20s. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we got to talk about something during these, you know. Boy, yeah. I just wish Major League uh, Baseball. Now, Wong, what is Wong doing? Wong is picking up his right leg to Howie Kendrick and Jimmy Rollins. And and Adrian Gonzalez are there. <laughs> I wish Major League Baseball and the umpires, I think, were asked by Major League Baseball to do this. Now this is clearly we're, we're going to talk about whether or not he slid off the back. So right. that's explainable. That's, that's right. everybody in the stands knows what they're looking at. But there are some plays they don't have that explanation. If fans are left to guess at the ballpark, I think they should do just like they do in the in hockey games and football games. Umpire quickly just makes an explanation to the fans. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's asking too yeah. much if you're a fan no. here. If you're going to do this. You might as well inform the fans. Now, again, this is clear cut, but there have been other issues where you wonder sure. what are they looking at? Mm -hmm. And you gave me a look like I'm crazy. I did not. You called me out early, and I'm calling you out. You 
think I'm crazy with them. I can see. I mean, Joe West, he would sing to the crowd. Say. We'd let Joe sing between innings. The singing cowboy, give him a guitar, let him let him rip out a couple of songs. I'm out of here. If Joe West starts <laughs> singing. Uh, oh, now no. see, see the, gl yeah. the glove was on the side. Watch Jimmy stay with the tag. So the hand, the hands off the bag, but now he goes to the side of the foot, and and Wong's foot, the toes are back on the bag. Good call. And a big play. Now he's in scoring position for right. Dan Carpenter. You were about to say too before I interrupted you. Hey, if you're caught, you might as well just keep going. Yeah. Well, it was a very slow move by Hal. Yeah. He said he, he did not have a good move to first. Had he sped up the move, they have a better chance of getting long. Two minutes, 26 seconds on that review time. Yeah, that's too long. Already Don Mattingly has been ejected in this game for the 18th time. Most ejections Joe Madden 22 Clint Hurdle these are active managers. Hurdle at 21. Don Mattingly 18. And Bobby Cox the all time leader right I believe so. 36 I think so. I believe that's right. Taken low and a walk. And Howe can't believe it. And we'll have a pitching change coming up. Harper, Frazier, Peterson, and Braun. DraftKings players to watch. In a promo code at Cardinals. I think they're going to make a double switch with AJ Ellis being removed from the game. But before he left, he had uh, words with Mike Winters. Since I'm out of there, I don't know whether he was run or not, but certainly complaining, thinking that last pitch was a strike to Carpenter. This season that includes overnight accommodations, tickets to a weekend home game, a personalized slugger bat, and a $25 gift credit. 
to brew house or red kitchen and bar book today 655-1234 or visit st louis arch.hyatt.com yeah aj ellis complaining about that uh about that play he wasn't run from the game he's out in the double switch but he did want to have a few things to say with Mike Winters, but these looks on Tim Wallach, the acting manager's face, <laughs> tells everything. Check this out. <laughs> I know it's not funny for the Dodgers, it's not funny for Don Mattingly watching in the clubhouse, but it's been a very, very trying night for. The Dodgers and and Mike Winters. Juan Nicasio in the game. So Peralta now with one out and two on. His walk. He's also doubled and scored and then called out on strikes back in the fifth. Big Cardinal fans. Jim and Mary Bright, along with their daughter Megan, watching the game tonight. Mary, hope you're feeling well and want to see you down here at the ballpark soon. Here's an interesting thing as a trail runner with runners on at first and second. You don't want to get hung up if you don't get a good jump, but the guy on second does. So it's it's imperative that Matt Carpenter look at Wong and check him out and make sure if he's going to run, he gets a good jump. That's driven out to left field. That ball is down. One run is in. Carpenter digging for third. He'll be held up. It's a double for Peralta. It's a three run St. Louis lead. Peralta a double and a run scored in the third and now another double good night for Johnny Peralta slowly but surely the St. Louis fans learning how valuable a man Johnny Peralta is and has been since coming over last year signing a three year deal with the Cardinals plays every day plays every day sure handed shortstop he can hit. Infield is drawn in and they will walk Randall Gritchick and pitch to Mark Reynolds. Ran into Jim Leland in spring training after the Cardinals had signed uh, Johnny Peralta and he said, You are going to love him. Mm -hmm. He said, This guy can flat out hit. Well, you know, the, one of the reasons Jim Leland said, uh, said that, and we were talking about that 2013 uh, playoff series between the Red Sox and the Tigers, if you remember that series. The, the Tigers had traded for the shortstop. Um, ah, still there. Slick fielder. Yeah, slick fielder. Can't think of his name right now. But they put Peralta Iglesias. And uh, Iglesias was the shortstop. They put Peralta in left field because they couldn't afford to take his bat out of the lineup. That's, That's right. how good a hitter he is. So base is loaded, one out. And Reynolds will be the hitter. There's a walk by Carpenter, double from Peralta, intentional pass to Richick, and a chance here for Mark Reynolds, who already has hit a grand slam this season. Did that against the Chicago Cubs. Sometimes a pitching coach will tell a pitcher what he would do in this situation and what Rick Honeycutt would do in this situation. If he were facing a left-handed batter, he'd throw him sliders away to entice to entice the ground ball. And because Mark Reynolds has an open stance and is vulnerable to sliders away, we'll see if that's what Honeycutt is telling Nicasio. 
it's kind of food for thought and you're trying to figure out because Rick Honeycutt Rick Honeycutt does not make needless uh, trips to the mound. Mazda game summary three nothing Cardinals bull singers six innings for the Dodgers Turner's two for three lackey another strong start for him here at home and Grichik one for three with an RBI bases loaded for Mark Reynolds. Reynolds is one for three with a single to left field tried to steal third base was caught back in the sixth. Here's the 0 1. Now 0 and 2. Boy, he has painted that outside corner with two fastballs. Situation where if you're a pitcher, you try to miss. If you're going to miss, miss away. You miss over the plate. Mark Reynolds been making a lot of money on that pitch for a long time. See the the gist of that though with Mark with that open stance it makes it very difficult to do to pick that leg up and approach that pitch outside and with two strikes you're not sure whether it's a strike or not. That's what that open stance one of the disadvantages of an open stance with two strikes is. They're not going inside. Oh two got him. So exactly what you were talking about staying away and then after the two fastballs you saw the breaking pitch. Yeah, that's nasty. Yes see it that is. Pitch off the plate away you can't determine. But uh, with that open stance it makes it. And I, I would. I wouldn't doubt that Rick Hennicutt was was talking to him about that. There's no sense in coming in. You know to a guy like Reynolds. And it brings in Yadier Molina with the bases loaded. Family and friends in town. Three brothers. The Molinas that play in the big leagues. Fly ball lifted into right. Ethier backs up, makes the catch. Cardinal strand, the base is loaded. 3 0 St. Louis.
eighth. A Bomberito Sports Update. We head to Cincinnati. Steven Strasburg making that start for the Washington Nationals. Had to leave in the second inning with an apparent injury. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Right. Reds uh, won that game 5 2. Earlier this year, he had some shoulder discomfort. Mm. Chris Heisey against Kevin Segrist. Speaking of the Reds, Heisey, a former Red. Chevy called to the pen, Segrist. And a fastball for a strike. One ball, one strike. Right now on the road, 35 consecutive scoreless innings for the Dodgers. 35 and counting. Segrist strikes out Heisey. The Hyundai pitch arsenal. Fastball change up in the curve. As Tim mentioned, you're seeing the change up a little bit more here in 2015. Dodgers now have struck out 10 times, nine at the hands of John Lackey, and the first one from Kevin Segrist. You know, I initially thought that they made a double switch and put Nicasio in the eight hole and, and put the catcher, Austin Barnes, in the nine hole. But evidently, A.J. Ellis was ejected yeah, from the he game. Was, yeah, I, I didn't know that. So Barnes is in Ellis's spot in the eighth. Position in that lineup, and now Heisey's in the ninth. Heisey had pinch hit for uh, the pitcher Nicasio. Right. I got you. Okay. No, I initially thought that too. Yeah, it was odd. And maybe that's another reason why Tim Wallach had those hapless looks on his face. Yeah, I thought initially Tim had come out to make a double switch, but that was not the case. It's hit the other way by Peterson. One ball, two strikes. He struck out twice. He has also walked. Peterson just turned 23 with the top young prospects of the Dodgers. The count runs full. Dodgers have a another great prospect down who went who had six hits last night. Six or six. His name's Corey Seeger. He's the brother of the third baseman from the Seattle Mariners. 3-2. Popped up Molina. Boy, that's a good pitch by Seekers. That inside fastball. We've talked a lot about lefty against lefty. You throw that pitch inside and then you get away with fastballs away to left handers. Kevin crowding Peterson. Good pitch. You may have chased a ball too. Yeah, maybe. With the strike zone tonight, you don't know. <laughs> True. So two down and it brings in Jimmy Rollins. Rollins twice is grounded out single to right field.
Jimmy with five home runs. Four of them from the other side of the plate. Just one right handed. You get older you guess more. You guess right. It was Gene Mock's theory that when you're older you throw older guys. More breaking balls. Even guys who were off speed hitters early and the reason for that. Is that older players don't want to look bad. So they're going to cheat on the fastball. So if you throw a guy a curveball, you get him out in front and you get him out. That's interesting. It's an interesting theory. Sure is. That's a fair ball down into the left field corner off the bat of Rollins. A two hit night for Jimmy. And a two out double. For annual, this one's for you, telecast. Rob Cochran. Both the Audi fans, he and his sister. So the two out double, and it brings in Howie Kendrick. Two outs, Rollins at second base. Strike one. Kendrick with a base hit to right field back in the first inning. He's grounded out to short and bounced into a 6 4 3 double play. The 1 1. Segrist struck out Heisey. Peterson popped out. A double by Rollins. Two and one to count on Howie Kendrick. Randy Choate getting loose. That's interesting. You have Choate. You would assume he's getting loose for Gonzalez, even with the lefty Segrist on the mound. Hmm. It is. As Justin Turner follows. Unless the inning would get out of hand, then you take it a little bit further. You get to Ethier. But show usually he gets up. It's not a bad. It's not a bad move when you think about it. You may be wasting a pitcher, but you're doing it in a game situation. Because should Kendrick get on, then Gonzalez represents a tying run. Two-two pitch. All for naught. Erase that.
brought to you by Budweiser. Still brewed the hard way, this Bud's for you. Our annual This One's For You telecast. The gang is at Fort Leonard Wood. Along with Tim McCarver, I'm Dan McLaughlin. Delighted that you're with us. Jim Hayes is here as well. And a 3-0 St. Louis lead. Second inning of work for Nicasio. And a ground ball with a broken bat. Nicasio to the bag. And there's one down. The bat was shattered. They're picking up the pieces, literally. Home plate umpire was picking up some. The bat boy. Well, the players have a name for that. Uh, when a bat is shattered and you get a hit, it died a hero. That bat did not die a hero. Oh. No, it did not. Here's Peter Borges, who struck out twice, is also grounded out. Looking ahead to the ninth inning, the heart of the lineup coming up for the Dodgers, Gonzalez, Turner, and Ethier. How about looking ahead uh, in the foreground? John Jay on deck. Yeah. Nice sight for Cardinal fans. You think about when Holiday sits and Grichik plays in left. Defensively, I mean that's a terrific outfield. Which is the case here tonight. Borges is the second out here in the bottom of the eighth. Seen Bridget can handle all three outfield spots. Hayward right. is a top defender in right field. And the speed of Moore just comes into play at center. And in my opinion, this guy does not get enough attention. Getting it from Cardinal fans right now. Chevy call to the pen. Paco Rodriguez, the lefty, coming on when we come back.
to retransmit it in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the St. Louis Cardinals. Two outs in the bottom of the eighth, and the Cardinals have a three-run lead. There's Paco Rodriguez. Dodgers love this guy. Yeah, they should, too. One of the most unusual motions in the game. Actually removes the ball from the glove. It's, I'm surprised he has not had, you know, one arm injury after another the way he throws, but it's very unusual. Wraps the ball, a curler, as pitchers are called who do that. A guy like Rick, Rick Sutcliffe was a guy like that. Very successful, but curl the ball behind his head. Rodriguez, a very, very good reliever for the Dodgers. Oh, one pitch to Jay. Tough league. You get back, you're healthy, and you got to face Paco yeah. Rodriguez. Yeah. But if John Jay is true to form, he'll try to hit the ball to left field. A lot of two out hits. Or two strike hits, I beg your pardon, for John Jett. That's the best way to combat a guy who goes the other way with two strikes is to pitch him inside. Sure. One of the beautiful things about the game, you know, for for one way to do it right, there's a way to combat that or defense against it. Prevent him from diving out over the plate. O2 pitch. It's a key out by Segrist. The strikeout of Kendrick leaving Gonzalez on deck. He comes up, he's got a chance to do some damage and maybe tie the game up. Mm -hmm. And once again, that's got to be the reason Randy Choke was warming up in the bullpen. You would think. Yeah. O2. Good at bat here by Jay. John was buying dinners for everybody down in the minor leagues. Yeah, that's a great story. Jim Hayes telling us before the game. <laughs> they cater to the clubhouse, my understanding, and uh, uh, guys aren't making a lot of money. John's made now in the middle of a contract. He's making some pretty good coin, so he decided mm -hmm. to pay for dinner. Yes, yes. Down in Peoria. You got it. Oh, how I wish I was in Peoria, but John's, in fairness to Peoria, glad he's not there. <laughs> you bet. Peoria, one of the great towns, and has been a Cardinal Cub territory for years and years, forever. That uh, ballpark and ball club, formerly owned by Pete Benakin, huge friend of Harry Carey's. Was a Chicago Cubs affiliate for a while now mm -hmm. with the Cardinals. Right. Mm -hmm. Anak and family still very much involved with baseball in Peoria. Pitch number nine of the at bat is a ball. That area also torn between Illinois State and Bradley. Oh. Hmm. Big, big rivalry. Mm -hmm. One two pitch. How about this at bat here, huh? Let me tell you about what Pete Benakin did at Harry Carey's funeral. He was speaking and they had uh, given time limits because obviously so many people wanted to speak. Well, Pete was, they were ready to get the hook out. 
And, and Pete said, wait a minute, I'm enjoying this. <laughs> <laughs> About his own speech. Oh, yeah. He said, I'm, I'm not through yet. <laughs> I'm enjoying this. So, so he stayed up for another 10 minutes. Oh, and, the, and he said the crowd went bananas. <laughs> <laughs> In typical Harry Carey, you know Harry was yeah. looking down, loving the whole thing. That's hilarious. Oh, it was wonderful. <laughs> Held at the, at the cathedral in Chicago. Pitch number 12 of the at bat. Grounded foul. I tell you, that story just put the smiles on about 15,000 faces in Peoria. I bet. Because Pete Benakin was hugely popular there as the owner of the team. His son ran the team for years. A great guy. Two two pitch. How about this? Base hit for John Jay. And boy, did he earn it. What a slick at bat for a slick guy. I mean, that was some at bat. What, 13 pitches? 13. A tough left hander, and Jay. His slot to left center with two strikes. Top of the lineup and Colt Wong. I was saying before, I don't think that Jay gets the attention he deserves in a positive manner. And I say that because he's been a, a winning ball player. A winning club. Defensive metrics will say that he's not the defensive player that maybe some others are, but when I look up, he's making play after play. He plays shallow. He goes back very, very well. It's a big key. He's, he doesn't have a strong arm, but how many outfielders do nowadays? How many outfielders have assists at second, third, or home? Not many. Base hit. Long. Jay will stop at second base. Two hit night for Colt Wong. The J at bat now Colt Wong has extended this to Carpenter. He's been on base three times tonight. A single and two walks. He's also lined out. Two outs, two on. One ball, one strike. Carpenter out to right field and Ethier is there. Cardinal Strand two that sends us to the ninth. That means Trevor Rosenthal coming in.
our post game show. Trevor Rosenthal coming on. He'll try to pick up the save. 3 0 St. Louis. And earn win number 32 for the Cardinals. As it starts to rain here at the ballpark. Our Chevy call to the pin. Adrian Gonzalez will lead it off. First pitch is strike. Gonzalez one for four against the Cardinals closer. Nothing at two. Rosenthal is three for three in save opportunities against the Dodgers in his career. Pitching with so much more confidence this year. You can you can see it, you can feel it in the gate. And pitchers have a gate. It's not just a, a way they walk. It's the, it's the way they receive the ball, the way they deliver the ball, their cadence. Very important. Cardinals have made a conscious effort to Tim not to overuse him, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. the velocity, the fastball, has been consistently 98-99. He could easy, easily do that with nine pitchers in the bullpen, but now the Cardinals are restricted to seven with the addition of John Jay tonight coming off the DL. Rain is picked up a bit here at the ballpark. And the one two slipping out of the hands of Rosenthal. Two two. High fly ball into center field. Battling the raindrops, Borges makes the catch. One away. Hyundai pitch arsenal here for Cardinals right-hander Trevor Rosenthal. Outstanding fastball, changeup, slider, and curve. I think the one thing uh, Yadier Molina has done this year, he's gotten back to the fastball. One thing, uh, Dan, that you mentioned earlier that. They told Trevor in spring training throw the fastball. Yeah throw it on the first pitch you throw 98 miles an hour quit messing around. I think I think some of that just kind of cleared his head. You know yeah. Which it'll do for a young pitcher trying to you get so many things to think about just get get back to why we signed you. We didn't sign you for a change. We didn't sign you for a change up. We signed you for the fastball. Popped up to the right side. Tough play here. And it drops. Foul ball. Rosenthal has said eventually he would like to be a starter. He's got the assortment of pitches that you would think would allow him to do that if he wanted to but man this role that he's in right now he's he's one of the best in the league mm -hmm. numbers bear that out. Popped up again. Reynolds. Two down. Let's turn to our Budweiser player of the game. The starter tonight, John Lackey. He was terrific. He certainly was. What a job. Cardinals get one more out that improves his record to three and three. Rosenthal trying to pick up save number 14. Would tie him with three others. 
at 14 and then two behind the league leader Drew Storm with 16. Pulled foul. Andre Ethier the final hope for a Dodgers team that cannot score right now on the road. Fly ball left field this should do it Cardinals take game one three nothing lackey is three and three save for Rosenthal a solid win for St. Louis. Key pitch in this game was that three that two two pitch to Andre Ethier had that ball been a ball and it was borderline nobody out at the time first and second and once the Cardinals got that call they took advantage of it and one going away. This night is all about our troops as well. We thank them. This one's for you, our annual telecast. It's on to the post-game show. Stay with us. 3-0 the final. St. Louis over Los Angeles.